Hi, this is Brian Gracely, and in this video, we're going to look at the first of a couple of segments focused on how cloud computing and some of the underlying technologies of cloud computing, whether it's virtualization, conversion infrastructure, or new ways to create applications, is really changing what the sort of traditional IT stack look like in terms of uh, not only technology, but IT skills and IT organization, and how that's going to potentially impact people that companies, uh, internal, external companies that want to leverage cloud computing, that want to leverage the technologies that are built uh, to provide cloud computing, and some of the things that companies should think about in terms of uh, their IT skills going forward, their IT organization going forward, and their process going forward. So we're going to break this up into about three different segments, but we're going to start with the basics first and build upon those. So let's look at sort of the traditional stack, if you will, that we've had for uh, the technologies that make up what's in the data center or how an application is provided. And these obviously aren't complete, but let's just start from here. We have the network, which becomes that foundation that's interconnecting our servers, interconnecting our storage, interconnecting our users um, to those applications, right? Uh, interconnecting, you know, within the network, we've got things like security and load balancing and some other services that make sure that we get high availability and that it's secure and that we get deliver great quality of service. We've got our server infrastructure, blades and rack mounted servers. We've got our storage infrastructure, SAN networks, NAS networks, as well as locally attached storage. And then we've got our applications. And those applications obviously have you know, a, a direct correlation to our servers. They've also got you know, somewhat of an indirect correlation to, to the storage infrastructure that, that stores the data for those applications. Now, if we start to think about cloud computing, and, and this is where cloud computing gets a little bit complicated, but one of the core tenements that people uh, tend to look at is they say, well, you know, what are the technologies that make up cloud computing? One of them is virtualization, virtualization, server virtualization in particular. So server virtualization came along from companies like VMware and Citrix and Microsoft and some other open source projects. And they came in here and they introduced a layer of software into the server infrastructure, which allowed us to sort of abstract the hardware and allowed us to run multiple applications, multiple OS or multiple applications, on top of uh, uh, consistent server infrastructure. Now, that's fine. That technology has been around for a number of years, seven, eight years now. Uh, it's very mainstream, but it's done a number of things to change the rest of the IT infrastructure. And for uh, sometimes uh, very, very good, help save us cost, help make us more efficient. In other cases, it's made things a little more complicated. So let's talk about what that means. Well, first, when I have multiple instances running on top of a server, in essence, what looks like multiple servers on top of one physical server, I now have to be able to network them together. Well, what that means is my network moved from being a set of physical devices that had a clear demarcation point at the end of a cable that plugged into a server. Well, now networking is a software function within the server. It's been extended into the server. So what does that mean? Well, that means that as an IT organization, I have to figure out do my network policies still apply in a virtualized world? Do my, uh, who's in charge of the network now? Who's in charge of the server, right? Those kind of questions, basic questions, um, start to get a little bit blurry, right? Where does the server team's function stop? Where does the network team's function start and stop? Who should be in charge of policy? Who should be in charge of passwords and administrative access and so forth? So that sort of becomes the beginning of this blurring of lines between the traditional IT stack. Now, the next thing that happened was virtualization technologies started saying, well, if I want to be able to automate more things, another core tenet of, of the technologies under virtualization, shouldn't I also be able to automate not only how the network get provisioned, how applications get provisioned, but also the underlying storage for those applications and how storage is going to interact with the network and how storage is going to interact with my servers. So again, we started to have sort of a blurring of those lines between the servers. We started having a blurring of those lines between the storage and the applications. And we started allowing virtualization to have visibility into storage. We started giving application uh, developers and application owners visibility into the storage, let them self-provision how much storage was needed for a certain application, right? And there's different variations of this, but those types of things started to happen. So now we start to get into situations where we have to ask, where does the network stop and start? 
Where does storage stop and start? Where does an application owner's uh, responsibility stop and start? So as you can see, a, a technology like virtualization, which again, sort of a cornerstone for many virtualization, uh, many cloud computing projects, starts to blur those lines between these different disciplines, these different technology silos. And so we have to start to ask ourselves, as we move forward and we're starting to leverage cloud computing, whether it's infrastructure as a service or you're building out platform as a service, software as a service, do we continue to build things with siloed technology groups and siloed IT skills, or do we start to look at, do I need sort of hybrid types of teams? Do I still need dedicated resources for any of these groups, or do I need some small portion of that, but maybe I need a larger portion of hybrid skills, people that can manage networks, whether they're data networks or storage networks. Maybe I need a, a virtualization team of which has skills that are made up of storage and networking and server maintenance and, and you know, I completely left out things like monitoring and all the operational functions that wrap around this, right? Do I need those skills embedded into all these teams? So those are the first types of questions that you begin to ask yourself because you look at what's happening where you've got blurring lines in the technology and you have to ask yourself, are our processes, the processes for how we deploy new applications, deploy infrastructure, have they been blurred? Are we starting to blur them on purpose to allow us to, to work in this new model? And at the, the skills that we have, are we starting to blur the skills, are we starting to combine and bring together, cross-train the people that have to support these things? Because ultimately, if we're gonna get to a more uh, robust environment, an environment that's efficient, that's dynamic, that can provide self-service, all the characteristics of cloud computing, right? we're gonna need a model that looks a little bit more like this. And we're, I'm gonna sort of draw this conceptually so we can think about it. We're going to have some sort of user, and that user could be a line of business, it could be an end user, it could be anybody who's requesting the service, and they're gonna come along and they're gonna say, I want, I need an application because I have a business problem. So I have a business problem, and I believe I need an application to help me solve that, right? That's what they care about, and that's what they've always cared about, but that's what they care about. Now, the first thing they're gonna want is they're going to want some way to self-service provision that themselves. They're gonna say, I wanna do this myself in terms of, I wanna tell you how fast I need it, I'm gonna tell you how much capacity I need, and they may not even know. So they're gonna want the application, this is gonna make things simpler for them, but on the back end, we have to be able to say, well, in order to do that, I've gotta be able to provision some number of server resources. I've gotta be able to provision some amount of storage resources. I've gotta be able to provision some amount of network resources. And I've gotta be able to think about this sort of holistically because this application might need different types of storage characteristics from the next person that comes along. It might need different network characteristics. It might need to be clustered. It might need to be integrated with some third-party application. And I also probably want that to be monitored and managed and you know all those types of things that we do to make sure that I can deliver an SLA. So if we move from this, I've gotta be able to deliver all these things on demand, not in silos, right? I've gotta be able to deliver them on demand. And so we start to get into, do I need dedicated teams for all this? Well, that's going to be difficult to coordinate if we're trying to meet a you know everything within one day, everything within one hour uh, paradigm. I'm probably going to have to start to blur the lines between those organizations. Second thing I'm also going to have to be able to start thinking about is, can I, instead of thinking about all the people that have to get involved with every single one of these elements, right, and keeping their skills up to date, can I then instead start to think about these resources being the ones that help me automate these processes? Am I leveraging technology from these different silos that can be automated, right? I wanna be able to go from here through here and automate these things, right? Am I buying technology that allows it to be automated? Am I buying technology that allows it to be flexible so that as application demand grows and shrinks, I can dynamically do that? But am I still considering my, applying my resources to manually configure these? Or do I start to help these resources move up in terms of the value they provide and start to think about how do they help me automate things? 
right? So what we get into is a number of service things, a number of skill things that we want to think about. And we'll talk about process stuff in a secondary video. But first and foremost, do I still want to have these silos? Is it even feasible to continue to have these silos? And I'm not by saying that those skills have to go away, but I'm saying do we need to sort of blur these lines, first and foremost. Second, does this type of model where we provide the user the ability to get access to resources in a short period of time, going back to our economics discussion about baselines of time, is that valuable to the business? In most cases, the answer is going to be yes. And third thing to think about is, how do we do that? How do we help these people? How do we help their skills? And there's obviously some coursework that's out there to help these IT professionals that have expertise in a certain area start to learn the language, start to learn the technologies of these other areas. But also, do we start to think about helping these folks escalate their skills up so that we're focused more on how to automate those processes, how to architect functionality that allows us to be dynamic, and to do that in a way so that we continue to leverage the skills that we have, we continue to give them the chance to learn new skills, and to be able to ultimately get to a point where we're servicing these people as a service, not so much as a silo as to things were done in the past. So uh, we're going to take that as our starting point. Um, the lines between technologies are blurring. Uh, we didn't touch anything on how the applications are changing. We'll talk about that in a later video. But the lines between the technologies are blurring, which ultimately means we probably need to think about how that's going to affect the people that today align to those different technology sections. It means they're probably going to have to get a little bit broader, a little more cross-trained and cross-functional. And also, how do we start thinking about leveraging those resources up a little higher, architecting this automation, this self-service, this dynamic capability into our infrastructure, and leveraging their skills to help automate the underlying technologies so that we're ultimately solving business problems with technologies. So that's the first thing we want to be thinking about as we change these organizations is the people underneath all this technology, aligned to this technology, are going to have to change somewhat. Their skills are going to have to change. And for IT professionals, that's great. It allows them to be involved with new technologies. It allows them to grow their skills. It allows them to be more flexible in what they do and ultimately become more valuable to the business. So that's part one of what we're going to talk about. We'll talk about process and we'll talk about sort of some other mindset changes that may have to happen within the organization to make this successful. Thanks for watching and thank you.